Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the highly respected leader of Marino School. She is President Shauna Tong, and today we are going beyond the classroom. Hey, President Shauna, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Rusty. So good to be with you today. Well, President Shauna, I, I've had a, the honor of talking and meeting with you a couple of times during the last few weeks. And, and it's just, I'm, I'm amazed at what you're doing at Marino School. But first, can you tell me a bit about your background growing up? Sure, a local girl born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii, um, and actually attended Mary Knoll since kindergarten. So I'm a K-12 Mary Knoll legacy student, um, and then returned to teach at Mary Knoll. You know, I was fortunate enough to attend the University of Hawaii uh, graduate program at Gonzaga University and at Chaminade University, my second master's. When I returned to teach in uh, 1988 at Mary Knoll, I taught second grade and have taught every grade from second through eighth and was um, fortunate to get picked up as uh, administrator. Um, my principal asked me to be the vice principal and then I became the principal, the vice president and here I am president of Mary Knoll School. Man, that is such an incredible story. I mean, you you are Marinol. <laughs> There's many of us here that are. You know, you just get attached to this school community. Now, President Shauna, tell me about Marinol School. I mean, the, the grades and, you know, just in general, what do you offer at Marinol? Well, we're established in 1927 by the Marino Sisters. Um, so we have a long legacy. So you have many alum that follow the school and remember their special times here. We are kindergarten through 12 across two campuses. So our K to eight on this campus and then the um, nine to 12 on Punahou Street. Uh, we have about 950 students, uh, 120 faculty and staff. Well, I, I think that's a really nice size uh, for a school. And President Shauna, I, I like really looking at some of these young little students and then really kind of projecting what they're going to be like in the future upon graduation. What, what kind of values and disciplines do you expect your graduates to possess when they graduate from Marino? Our goal is to be partners with their parents in really educating this child in, I want good people. I want you to graduate with good character, our spirit of noblesse oblige, to whom much is given, much is expected. Um, you serve the community and see yourself as how you fit into the global society bigger than just you. Of course, you know, academics is a given. You want them to have a passion and to be able to explore where they wanna be in their future, giving them some of the programs that will um, entice that. Yeah, no, that's really good to hear. And I know that Marinol has been thriving for, you know, some years now. And what do you see are the reasons why for that? We've really had a chance to um, revisit, especially with the pandemic, revisit, restart, recharge. It's an exciting time at Marinol. We'll be opening our pre-K uh, for four-year-olds starting in the fall. We're working on our licensing for that. We are the only um, Mandarin immersion program. So right now, our current fourth grade entered as kindergarten where they have 50% of the day in Mandarin and 50% of the day in English. 
You know, aside from that, we also have our pathway program that really gives students opportunity to explore their passion. So in STEM and civil air control, in medical innovations, in creative arts and expression. And we did announce that we're um, in a capital campaign here for Bachelet Hall, a renovation of our beloved Bachelet Hall, and that will be our um, arts center, performing arts center. Well, it's so good to hear that you have, you know, some unique classes like that. And, and you guys also have, do you have robotics as well? We do. We have a coding club. We have a strong robotics team. And actually, the robotics team starts in the grade school, um, you know, with the VEX IQ and then moves up into the high school. So that partnership where you have um, model students and you want to be like that when you get into high school. Exciting. Yeah, no, that really is. You guys offer a lot. And besides COVID, what are what are some of the challenges that you you're dealing with um, at Marino? You know, just getting back into um, engagement, engagement of our families, um, also really determining who you are as a school and what direction you want to go. It gives you a chance to recharge and be excited about your future. Yeah, no, and, and you know, there's, you, there's never a time to be complacent in anything you're doing. I mean, you're the, you're the coach of the entire Marinol school and you're such a great, well-respected leader. And what are some of your future goals? What, what would you like to see Marino become in the future? You know, keep producing just good citizens, good children, people who are confident in themselves, ready to tackle the world. You know, as your book says, no fear, right? You can, uh, you know, see that um, shoreline and it's okay to take the risk of um, separating yourself from that. Uh, Really, I would say it's the global thinking, students that are equipped for you know, their future in terms of our immersion program, but also, again, the pathways. If you wanna be um, a nurse, then you would enter our medical innovations pathway and have experiences and mentorships that will allow you to really know that that's the field you wanna go into. President Shauna, I had a chance a few weeks ago with you to really tour your, your gym. I mean, you guys have such a beautiful gym. I, I absolutely, I'm blown away by it. And what are your thoughts about the importance of learning life's lessons through sports? You know, believe it or not, I was a cheerleader for Marino School. And, you know, that's a difficult sport. But, um, I, it gives you this sense of teamwork, of belonging. It really gives you confidence to know that as a team, you can achieve anything. And what that gym has done for our sports program has really um, elevated, you know, the confidence level and the equipment that it takes to create champions. Now, I totally agree with you. And when I've been watching a, a variety of your sports teams, what I'm noticing is there's some great team bonding. There's some great uh, team culture with, with all of these sports that you have. And it all starts with the coaches. I mean, they're creating this culture, this really culture of excellence. Do you see the same as well? I do. Um, you know, our Athletic director Ben Valley, who is also an alum of Marino School, really prides himself on, you know, that you are scholar athletes and you are imitating to others what it means to be a leader in the in academics, but also in athletics. And only together as a team can we, you know, really move forward and achieve the excellence that you want. Now, when you were when you were attending Marinol versus what Marinol is now, what are the differences that you see from back then to now? You know, of course, we had um, many more sisters, the religious, and we've really now we're all laity, right? Uh, lay teachers. Marino has boosted itself in terms of the confidence that we have in the marketplace that we offer a good product, 
um, that constantly evolves and achieves more and more excellence. Also, um, in addition, would be extracurricular activities has expanded quite a bit to include things like speech teams and math teams, robotics, and our athletics program, uh, coding clubs, things like that, um, and the facilities that support it. That has been the biggest area of growth at Marino. And, you know, President Shauna, with your sports teams, because Marino is considered, you know, a slightly smaller school, um, are you guys still able to fill a lot of your sports teams? Because I know some of the smaller private schools sometimes have difficulty filling their sports teams. You know, there's a pride of being a scholar athlete. And so uh, many of our athletes do play in more than one sport. And then, of course, our division one would be our basketball and our softball. You know, those are um, areas that you'll see students participate in a variety of the sports because they just like being part of a team. You know, it expands their experience at Marino as a student. Now, President Shauna, I know that you have both of my books and I want to ask you, what are some things that really stood out to you in the books? Well, there's so many, Rusty, you're an inspiration to me, and I, I really will read these over and over. You know, the four Ps um, of bringing people together that as the leader, you really need to model listening to people and involving people. One of the things that I came to um, realization early on in my leadership is that you're not a leader if you look behind you and nobody's following you, right? Um, and my philosophy, um, and I'm encouraged by what you say in your books, is really that as a team, you move forward and that's how you achieve the excellence. I love many aspects of your book, but really making sure that people feel valued um, and how you help to stretch them and grow. Well, President Shauna, there are thousands of people behind you following you. <laughs> I can, I can uh, guarantee that because you are someone that really goes beyond the lines. You're a tremendous leader. And we, during these past few weeks, we were able to, have, to do two big book donations to Marinol School uh, with Dr. Tommy and Ryuko Sakoda and uh, with Charlene Lee. And what, what are your thoughts about how we're, we're trying to really uh, inspire uh, these schools with, through these book donations? You know, as we know, leadership gives us confidence to be successful in life in whatever aspect of the life you're dealing with. You know, thank you to Ms. Lee and um, Dr. Sakoda and Mrs. Sakoda. You know, you're just spreading the word. And it's through their generosity that we're able to use this as a tool. So we're starting at Marino with our leadership team. And then we'll um, also share with middle level management training for leadership. You know, as you said, coming together. And we even have plans that we'll start with some of our student leaders because they're the ones that interact with the rest of the community every single day. Yeah, and when we did that book donation from uh, Dr. Tommy and Ryuko Sakoda, it was so great to, to see Judge Peter Fong with us as well. I mean, he's the chairman of the board. What are, what are some things that, that you feel super grateful and thankful for that to have such a great leader and person like a Judge Peter Fong? You know, we have so many people who support us. Um, many are alum and some are people who just love Marinol. And Judge Fong actually uh, was instrumental in introducing you to us and he is our board chair. We have a very strong chair um, we, of our foundation of Marinol School, of our development committee, of our school board, our alumni association, parents, students, and just people who love Marino all coming together to really make sure that Marino's here for the future. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's so good. And, and I want to ask you, President Shauna, we, you and I have both been on, you know, teams, various teams throughout these years. And we know what the leader does that's good and what the leader does that might be not so good. 
What do you feel are some of the things that the greatest leaders do? Uh, for me, a good leader, as mentioned in your book, is, you know, sometimes you need to not be the, always the one in the forefront, that bringing people together is more important, um, making people see what strengths they have and nurturing them and giving them the confidence to be the next set of leaders. Succession of leadership is really important to me. Uh, listening, um, making people feel very comfortable. And that's how you move your organization forward. Yeah, and that's exactly what you're doing. And President Shana, how would you describe your leadership style? We is greater than me. That it's only as a team, as good as anyone on that team that you're gonna move forward. And that's my new philosophy really is the we is greater than me. You know, Rusty, I look at it like, um, you know, le po'o, it's more commonly known as a hakule. Um, you have so many different personalities, so many different ferns and flowers, and but it's only together that those ferns and flowers become this beautiful lay. And when I look at that, I'm often reminded of the beauty and the different talents that come from within our community that when woven together has such a perfect ending. And I, I, I like that, you know, that analogy for me is important. Well, I really like hearing that analogy about that hakule. I mean, that's so good to, to hear from you. And President Shano, what, what do you see, what's been an adversity that you dealt with, um, whether it's personally or professionally in your life, and how did you overcome that adversity? You know, believe it or not, I was a very shy child, um, very sensitive, I still am. So I think oftentimes my adversity comes from my own uh, insecurities. And it's when you look at a product like Merino School and you say, my goodness, this institution is so important to me that I need everybody on the same page and I'm gonna put all my efforts to bring the community together. And you get people who really, um, boost you up because they have different talents than you do. So I would say my biggest adversity throughout my life has been somewhat um, being shy or an introvert, believe it or not. And you just work on these things for the betterment of, you know, wherever you are in your life. It's funny you say that because I was the same way. I, I was really shy. I was an introvert. And and when I became captain of my high school tennis team, that kind of was the moment that I broke out of my shell because now I'm in a leadership role as be, right. you know, being captain. When, what do you see as when was it that you broke out of your shell from you know, going from introvert to you know, heading to the extrovert side? You know, I would stay um, sometimes after school on the grade school campus, you know, waiting to be picked up. And I was in seventh grade and the um, cheerleader from uh, the eighth grade came up to me and said, hey, Shauna, I want you to become a cheerleader. I want you to become one of us. And um, I was like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. You know, I don't have the confidence. And it was that point becoming involved in a team that really gave me a, the confidence. And then, you know, I started getting involved in student council and becoming parts of clubs. And although I was still shy, um, people around me and the, you know, the intertwining of um, my contacts and relationships with people, and then also mentors who said, they see, this is what your book says too, you see in someone, um, a special talent, and you're going to encourage them to really pursue that. And that's what I was surrounded by people who really cared about me, who loved me, and who gave me the confidence to succeed. 
I want to ask you more about cheerleading. I mean, I, I, I feel so, I was so happy when cheerleading became recognized as a, as a regular sport because it, it's, it's, it's so difficult doing what they do and what you have done as a cheerleader. Can you tell me more about really behind the scenes, how challenging it is to be a cheerleader? You know, people think you put on the cute outfit, you got your pom poms and your hair bow. Um, but, you know, you, you have to train, you have to practice, you run. You know, in those days, we used to run stairs. Uh, you run up and down the stairs. I don't think we had a stairmaster, but that's what we did. Um, you know, you stretch and you prepare yourself both physically and mentally. Um, and you know, the hours of practice that it takes to create pyramids, the hours of practice that it takes to be able to perfect your, you know, how you all move together synchro um, synchronously in, you know, in your moves and in what you do. And then projecting your voice in the proper way. You know, there's just so many different components that come together in whatever sport you're in. And the danger factor, I mean, I, I'm sure, I mean, did you ever get injured or a lot of your teammates get injured in cheerleading? You know, actually my vocal cords, <laughs> my doctor, you know, put me on a special, you're not to yell at this decibel. Um, your knee suffers a lot, your back, you know, and so that's why the weight training is also important. And then in how you build your pyramids and how you do your splits and what have you, all of the preparation that goes into being physically prepared. Yeah, no, I, I totally see that. I would watch our cheerleading teams practice. And when you see what they do, I mean, and then they support all of the sports teams. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's really incredible what cheerleaders do. And President Shauna, I want to ask you about you again, about, you know, if you can share what's a valuable, important lesson you've learned in life so far? Hmm. You know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to others and to not only support others, but I have learned that you gain so much in how you interact with people. Um, I remember being an eighth grade teacher and I would evaluate, uh, because evaluate, I was a dean at the time, a, a kindergarten teacher. And I learned so much from just being able to push the limits of my instruction and curriculum by really being um, a constant learner. And, you know, that's what I wish for all our students to be just constantly learning, to be confident, and to know that they're loved and they have a special safe place here at Marino. Now, President Shauna, we've we've all had teachers that had such a big impact on our lives growing up. Who's a teacher that had a very positive, big impact on your life when you were growing up? And and what was the reason for it? You know, it, it's hard to identify just one, but I do have, ironically, it's my two English teachers. Um, Mrs. Marilyn Dunn, she taught me eighth grade uh, English, language arts. And then Mrs. Frankie Lucas as my high school sophomore uh, English teacher. You know, I just wanted to be like them. They were classy women who were smart, who were compassionate, and who really made you feel special. And what they did was look at where you were at and always boosted you up so that you could be confident and successful in whatever your project was. And I always said, when I'm a teacher, I wanna be like that. Ironically, I did end up coming back as a teacher and, and were able to call them colleagues. And I have no hesitation in always identifying that, hey, you two are the ones that I model my teaching and my leadership after. 
Well, and, and that's why, you know, it's really important to talk about these things because some of these students right now, I mean, they're being impacted by these teachers and whether these teachers know it or not, I mean, they, they are all role models. Don't you agree? I agree, definitely. You know, you when you're a teacher, you're constantly in the spotlight of those students. They go home and they imitate you and it better be a good imitation. <laughs> You're right. I, I, I've imitated some of my teachers before, too. <laughs> now, President Shauna, in my book, I, I, I talk about how risk promotes growth. Can you give me an example of a time when you took a risk? You know, February 1st of last year, when I accepted the role of head of school for Marino School, that was a big risk for me. I, um, you know, it, to own the position and to give it 100%, you just want to do so well for the school that means so much to you. And that was a big risk for me. Um, fortunately, I've had people who have stepped forward um, to offer their mentorship and their love and their care and their guidance and wisdom. No, I, I, I can totally see how that's a risk. And because you care about Marino and you care about what you do and, and you know, you're in that role where you're, rep, you're a reflection of everybody at Marino and everyone's at Marino is a reflection of you, right? Yes, definitely. Now, President Shauna, what would you, I mean, you're a very successful leader. And people define success in different ways. How would you define success? You know, when you say I'm a successful leader, it's only because of the people that who are successful around me that we come together as a team. Um, to me, success is many things to many people. But for me, it's definitely just doing the best that you can do to make sure that all of the students at Marino feel loved and cared for and that they have a special safe place. And if my students feel that, then that's my success. Well said, President Shauna. And, and I know that gives you extreme fulfillment. And, and I can see that happening, I mean, you know, from the outside looking in for sure. And, Sean, I want to really thank you for taking time to be on the show today to really share insights about, you know, why Marinol is thriving. Rusty, thank you for being an inspiration to all leaders. Uh, enjoyed your books, and I'm excited for the things that we will do in our leadership training. Oh, I'm excited to, to really see what happens there. And thank you, President Shauna. And Thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that President Shauna and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.